you know, subhanAllah, this dunya, as I said, as we said, up has ups and downs. But if I'm a person who goes himself completely every day, you know, five times for five minutes, I break off completely of this dunya. I don't care. Because the first thing I say in my salah, I say, Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. Allah is greater. If I'm having a problem, Allah is greater. If I'm having, even if it's happiness, subhanAllah, you know, the sunnah, when sunnah that many Muslims left is making sujood shukr, mm -hmm. you know, uh, making sujood when you have, like, when you hear happy news. Mm -hmm. To remind yourself, well, it is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's not lasting even, subhanAllah, in this dunya. So, you know, we are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we break off, whether it's happiness, whether it's sadness, whether it's problems, we break off from this dunya five times a day. You know, poor sleep, we sit and we come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we come to the source of the real happiness, subhanAllah. That is, you know, and alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Unfortunately, because ibadat, you know, ibadat is the worship, the acts of worship. Unfortunately, they tend to become adat. You know, they become mm -hmm. traditions so, uh, to us. As a human being, you do something, you know, ha they become habits, subhanAllah. You do something very often, mm -hmm. subhanAllah, and you know, it's just, you know, like the other day I was supposed to exit on one exit and pick up my friend. I kept going and I exited on my home exit and it's like, okay. And she said, look, why is it taking you a long time? And it's like, you know, I just exit. I took the other exit, my home exit. So because it's a habit, I go to home every day. I go home every day. So that's why I'm used to take the exit, subhanAllah. And this, this is the same with Salah. You know, unfortunately, it's like rarely that we do bring ourselves completely off this dunya, we block it off and we concentrate that I am meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine how beautiful that meeting with Allah, with the King of the Kings, subhanAllah, meeting with Allah, talking to him, talking to you back. How special is that? Unfortunately, how much do we neglect it? Because it became as a habit, subhanAllah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring different seasons and he switch things on us, subhanAllah. That's why we have Ramadan. You know, Ramadan is where a whole month you you kind of turn off dunya for a while. I'm not saying like I'm gonna stop working. I'm gonna stop you know uh, tending to my kids and my husband and it's like you know I'm I'm gonna be doing these chores. Subhanallah. But at the same time, this is a whole month that I need to concentrate on my soul. That's a whole month that you know, like 24/7, I'll be thinking, you know, Allah is watching. What am I doing at this moment to please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? I need to be doing something more. I need to be engaged in another thing, subhanAllah. So all of, all of these things, I, I go in a concentrated camp where I'm working on my soul literally every minute. Not, not five minutes, 25 minutes through the whole, the whole day. I go every minute of that day and night, subhanAllah. And if, inshallah, like when we come to the ibadat in Ramadan, you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like have gave us an option to be doing everything in every minute of Ramadan where we are busy and working on our soul and training that soul, subhanAllah. It's a training camp where we train ourselves to be to become better persons, subhanAllah. I, I was listening to a brother uh, in a lecture, subhanAllah. He said like if you come to Ramadan and leave the same way, you are a loser. You are a loser. You need to come to Ramadan and leave it better than you were. SubhanAllah. And inshallah, when you leave, when we leave Ramadan, we wanna we wanna leave with something better. We we don't wanna back, go back to our bad habits. We don't wanna go back even to our regular habits. We wanna leave Ramadan with something extra. If you were if you had like three fourths of your you know, let's say you were doing three fourths of your sunnas, let's inshallah have you know all fourths of your sunnas. If you are not doing any sunnas, inshallah you will leave Ramadan doing sunnas. Maybe you, you can engage in some fasting once a day, once a week, once uh, a month, or you know, three days a month. You have to leave Ramadan with ex something extra. Otherwise, unfortunately, like you know, you will be from those who have came to Ramadan and you know, SubhanAllah Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, you know, You know, SubhanAllah, you know, Ragima Anf means you know, you know when a baby or a kid, you know, take, you take something away from them and they throw themselves on the ground and it's like, you know, tantrum, you know, subhanAllah. This is the situation of a person who have Ramadan have came to them and subhanAllah that Ramadan left and they did not like get forgiveness during that month, subhanAllah. And the only way, and subhanAllah, the scholars say the way that you can tell if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted your ibadat in Ramadan 
if you continue do, doing good after Ramadan. Otherwise, if you go back to the same situation, most likely you, you didn't attain that taqwa. You didn't attain that level of taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted what, accepted what you did. So you continue with it, subhanAllah. So inshallah, like we'll all come into, into the mentality where we do want, subhanAllah, to come to Ramadan in a, and inshallah, it does take preparation. Don't think, you know, first day of Ramadan, I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna be a different person, I'm gonna be so religious. SubhanAllah, that's, that's the mentality I see around. People think, in first day of Ramadan, I'm gonna be totally, and they, they do the last thing, for last time I'm doing this, because in Ramadan, I'm gonna stop. Uh, uh, the God of Ramadan is the God of every other month, yes. SubhanAllah. And the one who's watching you now is the same one who's watching you mm -hmm. in the month of Ramadan. So if you are truly about attaining taqwa and being successful in Ramadan, switch out this moment mm -hmm. and start working on yourself. Start working on your soul, SubhanAllah. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subscribe fasting? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the month of Ramadan? You know, sometimes we will think, you know, why? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does he benefit from our prayer? Does he benefit from our, you know, hunger? All of this, you know, why Why does he give us give us these things, subhanAllah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he, you know, he tells us, Allah yadru ila dar salam. Allah wants peace for you. Allah is calling you for peace, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa alladhi ba'du bil ummiyyina rasoolan. He wants to purify you. He wants to, to cleanse you, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us that he wanted to have mercy upon us. Allah tells us he wanted to have forgiveness on us. So we know from the words of Allah himself that this month is not, you know, just to torture us, to make us feel hungry, to make us be tortured because I can see the food but I cannot touch it, subhanAllah. So, you know, subhanAllah, the, the, the benefit, the benefit of bringing Ramadan is, you know, first thing is to make us break the habit. Make us, you know, inshallah, like, hopefully we can become more aware of what we are doing. SubhanAllah, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to waste any of the actions. But sometimes I just like, oh, the whole day I went without, you know, like renewing my intention. But subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to waste any of our actions. But the action that you are aware, completely aware of, that's the action that's going to benefit your soul. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for any good you do. Like, you know, if your habit is just smiling at people, subhanAllah, Allah will be rewarding you for that. Even if you, you're not telling yourself, that's a salah, that's giving a charity, that's giving a charity, right? Subhan, because sometimes you, you make it as a habit. You're smiling at everybody. You're saying salam at everybody. It becomes as a habit. You do not renew that intention. Allah is not going to waste the reward. But the, the, the action that work on your soul, that benefits your soul, is the one that you are aware of. And that's, that's why we need to walk, walk, like be aware, bring our, our awareness all the time. And you know, the best time to bring that awareness is Ramadan, SubhanAllah. <coughs> SubhanAllah, if I told you, If I told you, subhanAllah, that it is raining outside, she's, come, she's just coming from outside, and you can confirm that with her. And it's not a joke, it's raining outside, it's raining money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just money, it's not like one dollar bills, it's like raining like 50 and 100 dollar bills, <laughs> subhanAllah. And yeah, I know, you know some of you will be over it, but you know, when I confirm it and you know I'm not lying, most of you are going to be out of this room, right? <laughs> Collecting. These bills, making sure like you give them all, right? And you get as much as you can from these bills, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. In two weeks, what is gonna be raining on us is better than money. It's better than money. It's gonna be showers of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's better? What's better than the showers of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be falling upon us? SubhanAllah, if a person missed the whole thing, you know, you call your friend, you're not like at, at 10 a.m. it was raining money, you missed it, it was for going for 30 minutes and you missed it. And it's like, oh, I slept until 11, I missed it all. You know, he runs out, you know, no more bills are left, SubhanAllah, what is he going to feel? You know, he's just going to be so depressed. Just like, you know, the, the position we were talking about, you know, being <laughs> throwing a tantrum, throwing yourself on the ground, because I missed all of that. Everybody was having fun collecting money, and I missed all of that. That's the situation of a person who's going to miss Ramadan. Who's going to miss Ramadan. And, and I'm not saying miss Ramadan, they're not going to fast, they're not going to do anything. But Ramadan is going to come to them as a habit. And, you know, try your best. And I'm, you know, I'm talking to myself, 
you know, subhanAllah, some of you, mashallah, you're lucky. It's a new thing to you. You can, you know, it's a, you know, something you are, it's going to be, you're going to work hard to, to work, to do, and it's going to be, you know, some, something that you are aware of. SubhanAllah, unfortunate for us Muslims who've been Muslims all of our lives, it's just, it takes so much work to be aware of it because it became as a habit, it became as a tradition, SubhanAllah, that, you know, we need to break off so hard, SubhanAllah. You need to break off sometimes from people because they want to restrain you to certain traditions in Ramadan. And this is not part of Islam, I, I don't want it, SubhanAllah. So this is what I'm talking about, you know, getting the full benefit of Ramadan. Being, you know, knowing that SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to shower us with mercy, with forgiveness, do not miss it. And try your best not to miss it. Try your best to work to the maximum. But tell yourself, SubhanAllah, I can do it. It's a month. It's 30 days. I can do it. We've been through testing. We've been through, you know, SubhanAllah, all of you have been through school where you, you try your best. You don't sleep much. You know, barely you sit with your family. You work so hard, SubhanAllah. You can do that for the month of Ramadan. And, you know, try start working hard, SubhanAllah, from the beginning. And even if you can from now, switching around. SubhanAllah. Try to maybe like, so you are not so hungry at the beginning, maybe you can start to eating smaller meals. That helps a lot. You can start eating smaller meals. You, you're not going to be focused on your hunger at the first days of Ramadan, that you can, you can do it. You can, you know, inshallah, like be, be engaged in other things other just than fasting. Because if you're so weak in the beginning, because you never did the fasting, Maybe you cannot be engaged in other things. You, maybe you, you know, you'll just do your salah, whatever. Or, you know, you can you can start working on that, inshallah, from now. Uh, Subhanallah. <coughs> Ramadan, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, like you know, it's not just a regular month. It's a very special month. Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told us, "Shahr Ramadan, the unzila fi al-Quran." You know, the month of Ramadan is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an, subhanAllah. It's, it's the anniversary for our book, that's our precious book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, people hold anniversaries for all sorts of things, subhanAllah. You just go to the card section in Walmart or any store, you just like, you know, they have anniversaries for almost everything, subhanAllah. Any special occasion, people hold anniversary, I want to I wanna celebrate this anniversary. Imagine, the most special thing on this earth, the most sacred thing on this earth, which is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, revealed down to us on the month of Ramadan. It is the anniversary of this Qur'an. So make the Qur'an as part of your daily choice, inshallah, in Ramadan. And, I'm, and I do understand that, you know, many of us do not read Arabic or at least read the, the meaning, you know, or try to listen to Qur'an. You have many options. Alhamdulillah, at the age of technology, mm -hmm. nobody have an excuse not to have some Qur'an in their daily life. SubhanAllah, you can, you can do whatever just to, to just hear some Qur'an, read some Qur'an, make up the Qur'an a daily thing in your, in your Ramadan because, you know, this is the only way you are celebrating, you know, the anniversary of this Qur'an through this month. <coughs> Allah, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also tells us about this month. أتاكم شهر رمضان شهر مبارك. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he's announcing to the to the Sahaba, you know, شهر رمضان has came. Everybody knows we've been watching the moon with you, but why is he now making that announcement? Stress on the importance of this month. It's coming. It's a blessed month. Take advantage of it. You don't want to waste it. Subhanallah. Like this this is the month that you do not want to waste a minute. Subhanallah. Another special thing about Ramadan. You know, we we know that there is a there is a special night in it. What's that night? Laylat al Qadr, the night of power, Subhanallah, right? And Subhanallah, this night is not just like any other night, not even a, like a year. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi told us Laylat uh, Prophet in the Quran also Subhanallah Laylat al Qadr khayyur min al shahr. It's better than one thousand months, Subhanallah. Eighty three and four months. That's how much this one night. And you know, nights are short now. Mm -hmm. Our Maghrib is like around years. eight. 83 years and four months. Mm -hmm. 80, 83, what did I say? You said 83 and four months. Yeah. Yeah, 83, 83 years. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 83 years, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't specify that. Not sure. Okay, so imagine, subhanAllah, our nights now are eight hours from eight till four when Fajr broke out. 
like that's eight hours worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not the whole eight hours mm -hmm. part of these eight hours because Prophet Muhammad SAW not, never like told us to stay up all night mm -hmm. subhanallah worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as part of this night subhanallah equals what 83 years and four months 83 years That's even if we are you know to to subhanallah live for a hundred and hundred and something subhanallah that's not going to be complete worship, right? Mm -hmm. Take 50 for sleeping, 20% uh, for eating and using the restroom or what, you know, and you are left with a few years, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. But every time you you catch this night and you worship Allah through this night, subhanAllah, it is 83.4 years mm -hmm. of ibadah, just worship. It's written in your book, this is how much you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how special this month is because it contains this this uh, night. SubhanAllah, what to do, what to do, What's, uh, what are things to do in Ramadan? We know, we all know that the very special thing is what? Rest. Is Siyam. You know, we, yeah. we just, it's the highlight of Ramadan. When we, when we hear the word, you know, Ramadan, we, we know it's fasting. It equals fasting. So the, the very important thing is to do fasting in Ramadan. And, you know, SubhanAllah. And fasting is, it's such a special ibadah. Why is it special? Because it's solely for the sake of Allah. Subhanallah. Prophet Muhammad SAW told us in a hadith, a hadith Qudsi, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصيام فإنه لي وأنا أزيله." Which means, Subhanallah, all the actions of you know of the Bani Adam, the son of Adam, have it's for him. It belongs to him because you know he can get he can get part of satisfaction from it. You know, you go into the we lesson, you're great. Words, you know, please. there is benefit from it, subhanAllah. And even Siyam, there is benefit. But can get a special satisfaction from it, subhanAllah. <coughs> Except for fasting. Because it's solely between you and Allah, subhanAllah. Mm. You know, who knows what you eat or drink when you close the door? It's solely, you are going hungry just for Allah, subhanAllah. There is nobody putting a camera on you, wait, watching you for 24, you know, 12, 16 hours of your fast time. So it is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's solely like you do not have like a part of satisfaction from it. You know, sometimes unfortunately we have the shaitan where it whispers, Oh, what are they gonna say about you? MashaAllah, you're doing your prayer, you're you're doing a, a, a lecture, you, you know. Shaitan comes to us as human beings and we think we are getting, you know, a special satisfaction from an action or another. But fasting is not because it's solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody else knows, subhanAllah, that I am fasting. Or I'm, you know, 100% fasting, not just fasting in front of people, subhanAllah. So it is completely between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? What? Ana ajzibah. Like, this is, the reward is on me. He didn't reveal the reward. We know, subhanAllah, like, in a hadith, Prophet Muhammad SAW told us, every fasting day makes you further from Jahannam 70 years. Makes you further from Jahannam. But this is not the reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the reward is like a wrath gift that I'll only give it to my servant when I need them. You know, in another hadith, he said, the fasting person has two, two happiness. One time when they break their fast, subhanAllah, being deprived of their right to, you know, losing food, they feel happy being able to eat and drink. And the second happiness is when they need me. SubhanAllah. So for every day you fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know that there is a happiness. You will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he didn't reveal it because it's so special. You know, like somebody, you know, somebody can mail you a gift or mail you a card and you're just like, oh, that's nice and then that's sweet. But if they come knock at your door and tell you, I want to give you this gift face to face because it means so much to you. You mean so much to me. How special is that? And this is what Allah is doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, when you meet me, I will show you the gift. I will show you the reward of fasting. SubhanAllah. This is so special. So inshallah through all out our day, 16 hours, it's not easy. But throughout our day, just like, you know, look at that happiness. Look forward to that happiness. Where you meet your creator, you meet your Lord, SubhanAllah, and hear that from him. This is for what you did. This is your gift for what you did that day. SubhanAllah. And it's not like, you know, whole month, it's not a whole back. You will get a happiness. You will get the prize for every day, inshallah. So fasting is the highlight of Ramadan. And make sure, inshallah, like you you do yeah, like you do it at the best that you can. 
so you can get the benefit also because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so you can attain taqwa, you can attain that, that, that consciousness, subhanAllah. Or you may, you know, the ayah is saying, that means, you know, we might, we might not. That's what, why we need to work on it. You know, some uh, Prophet Muhammad in a hadith said, you know, uh, Allah I forgot the wording, so I'm going to say it in English only. Like some people will only get from the, their fasting is the hunger and the thirst because they didn't they didn't do their proper fasting they were hungry they were thirsty through the day but they did not stop from hurting people they did not stop from backbiting they did not they did not do their fasting the proper way so fasting should be like i'm watching myself i'm hungry for allah so uh, you know in ramadan subhanallah we are you know we take the right from ourselves from halal stuff you know it's halal to eat it's halal to drink water. It's halal to do many things, subhanAllah. But then we, we allow you know, ourselves to, no, I'm not going to do it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me it's halal. So how about approaching haram? That makes it harder and harder for us to approach haram. Because if you are making yourself thirsty and hungry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in halal matters, how about haram? You are more, more conscious of what you're doing and what you are approaching. So subhanAllah, that's, that's the greatest thing. Fasting is, a, is another thing that subhanAllah, it weakens you know, our, our desires. It weakens the, you know, the, 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 what do you call it? Desires, impulsions to do okay. things that are. To, to be engaged into something that's haram, subhanAllah. Because your body is weaker, subhanAllah, that you, you do not even come to think about it. SubhanAllah. So it helps, it helps you as, as to work on yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Ramadan, He doesn't just like, okay, you know, here, you know, I'm giving you a great gift, just take care of it, do it. He gives us like, you know, help through the way. You know, Prophet Muhammad told us, you know, in, in the hadith that the doors of, of heaven, the door the doors of Jannah are open. The first night, when, when they announce the moon is out, the doors of Jannah are open. All eight doors of Jannah are open. And all seven doors of hell fire are closed. SubhanAllah, what is, it, what is easier? To get in a door that's open or the door that is closed? Hmm. An open door. Like this door now is closed. It's easier for a person if they look there and look here, you know, to enter the masjid. Hmm. SubhanAllah, because that's an open door. That's a closed door. It's easier for us to get into, into Jannah. SubhanAllah. Because the doors are open. They're calling us. Come on. SubhanAllah. And, and you know, SubhanAllah, we find it. And I don't know, maybe somebody can back me up. We find it so easy to do good in Ramadan and harder to do it outside of Ramadan. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason. SubhanAllah. Because the doors of Jannah are open. SubhanAllah. Like, you know, I was fasting a week ago and it's like, you know, SubhanAllah, I was waiting for the day to finish. It was, you know, SubhanAllah, it's, it is so hard mm-hmm. to fast outside of Ramadan. In Ramadan, subhanAllah, it's so easy. Because that's it. Allah is helping us. SubhanAllah. Allah is not just, you know, telling us, hey, for one, take care of it. That's it. SubhanAllah. Mm-hmm. The hadith continues, SubhanAllah. Another help that Allah gives us, that the shayateen are going to be chained. The, the devils are going to be chained. No more devils to whisper. No more what devils to, work, to whisper to all humans, to all the people on this earth. SubhanAllah. No more whispering. SubhanAllah. Well, how come bad, bad is still happening? How come we still exactly. commit sins? JazakAllah khair. It's habits. We, you know, shaitan have been training us for 11 months. We're just like, we've been under the training of shaitan until he formed these bad habits. And it's just like, we don't need shaitan anymore. We can do without him, you know, right? So we got <laughs> Yeah, that, that, you know, he's, he's a good teacher. <laughs> Subhanallah. So shaitan is locked up. So all I have to work on is my nafs. My nafs, my desires. I can work on that. Subhanallah, it's hard. But I can, if I'm aware, I can, I can break these habits. I can teach myself not to do it anymore. I can teach myself not to be engaged into these things anymore. I can raise my consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my consciousness of uh, what, what I'm doing and what pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I can break these habits. 
it's easier because you know subhanallah sometimes your consciousness will bring you to do the good thing but shaitan is there whispering no 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 no, no. that's better for you come back but subhanallah there's no shaitan there's no shaitan you can do it <coughs> unfortunately the the shayateen that are not locked up are the shayateen of ins the, the human beings shayateen you know they they want to take you to a movies in the middle of Ramadan. They want to you know your friends who are I'm not saying they're shayateen. Your friends are go go to your friends and tell them you're shayateen. <laughs> but you know we are we are all like have these this nuts that you know want to do the easy way. You know what where you know where we can enjoy more. You know you would enjoy this better than being in the masjid. Come on, let's go there. You know let's be in this situation. So you need to. Be good to yourself and be good to others and bull these others, subhanAllah. If you are a stronger person that you can work on your nafs, uh, let me know, inshallah, whenever you want me. <laughs> if you are a person who can work on yourself and beat that nafs, help help somebody else. Help somebody in your family, help somebody in your, uh, inshallah, in, in your friends. Like, try to pull somebody out also of this, inshallah. Um, okay, five minutes. And now I'm just like, what do I say in these five minutes? <laughs> Looking through my you see, the notebook is like full, right? Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah. I told my husband yesterday, I dreamt that I came to the class without preparing, so I woke up after Fajr and I've been preparing to Sayyidina <laughs> Muhammad. <laughs> so, subhanAllah. We can do so much in, the, in Ramadan, and I want to, you know, use these five minutes to kind of, you know, tell everybody what to do in Ramadan, inshallah, and including myself. I'm not saying ideas, Allah. <laughs> ideas, subhanallah. A uh, hadith Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, and just to, you know, to add to your fasting, inshallah, it, um, excitement. <coughs> Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man saw Ramadan iman wa min You just, all you need to do is to focus on your fasting and make it right. And all of your bad deeds are erased. You come back as a baby, subhanAllah, with no bad deeds. That's one thing. Another hadith Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ دَنْبِهِ SubhanAllah. Whoever prays the night prayer in Ramadan, it's for the sake of Allah subhanAllah, not because all of my friends are in the masjid, so I'm going to go to the masjid. And, and it doesn't specify a masjid or a home, subhanAllah. A night prayer. SubhanAllah, you do it all through Ramadan, it's, it, your, your bad deeds are forgiven. SubhanAllah. Qiyam, it's, it's, Tarawih is considered Qiyam al So if you pray Tarawih every night, and Tarawih can be done at home, can be uh, done at the masjid, you can do them in a small group, you can do them you know, by yourself, you can do it. And it's just the, the only restriction, they have to be done in twos. After Isha prayer, you do them in twos. Two rak'ahs, yeah. So, and the scholars kind of differ on how much, what's the maximum. You know, Umar ibn Khattab, he kind of, with ijtihad, he told us it's eight. But, you know, you can do as much as you can. You know, even if you pray four every night and keep it as a continuous, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi told us that, you know, Allah loves a continuous action that is small, better than an action that is big, that stops. So <laughs> form a habit, you know, even if, you know, if you pray four rak'ahs after Isha, you know, you cannot make it to the masjid, do it at home, do it by yourself. Four rak'at after Isha, and inshallah you are guaranteed forgiveness, inshallah, at the do end of the month. Do it sitting if you need to. I mean, the sunnah prayers it's are a sunnah. It's a sunnah, yeah. If you're working all day, standing, you don't want to get yourself very tired, subhanAllah, through the night, so you can continue, do it sitting. So it's not, it's, it's a sunnah, it's not do restricted. What can and move there is no restrictions that, you know? on the, awesome. the taraweeh, subhanAllah. Uh, <coughs> Uh, SubhanAllah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told us like wh whoever prays behind the Imam, you know, just to encourage you to go to the masjid even if at least once, SubhanAllah, whoever prayed behind the Imam for Salat al Risha and, and waited until the Imam finished the whole prayer, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will write for him as if he prayed all night, all eight hours. It's counted that you have prayed through all eight hours if you prayed behind the Imam, SubhanAllah, until the Imam finishes. Uh, another thing, SubhanAllah, some of us cannot fast. If you, you know, give the, the, the means for somebody to break their fast, you cook for somebody, you bring meal, a meal for somebody, you, uh, you provide the small thing, maybe, inshallah, we were talking about in the youth girls yesterday to talk, to do like meals on meals where we deliver food for elderly, 
you know, subhanallah, if you do this, Prophet Muhammad said, man fattara sa'iman, falahu mithla ajr. If you bring the means to somebody to break their fast, it's, you get the same reward as they are. If you are a person who is excused from fasting, if you are a person who cannot do the fasting, so you can you can get the reward even without doing it, with it. or you can get the double the reward. I'm fasting and I can bring these means to somebody also. Subhanallah. If you're a person who's cooking for your family, you can you can be you know given their reward and your reward. Subhanallah. And you, you you don't get their reward. They get their reward and you get like their reward. Subhanallah. Oh yeah. No sorry. <laughs> Uh, do I finish with one hadith? Or? No. Okay. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in, in a hadith policy, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking in this hadith. مَا زَالَ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ You know, my servant keep on, you know, coming closer to me with extras. Extra, nawafil are extras. You know, you even do tasbih. You're doing your work. You're at work. You're at school. Doing dhikr. tasbih, saying dhikr, which is subhanallah, la ilaha illallah. You know, these things, these are extras. The more you do these extras, the more you pray, you, the more you do these extras, the closer you are to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more you are going to build that love in your heart for him, and he's going to love you more, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So I, inshallah, I encourage you, and I'm sure you, from this class, you've learned about doing different things. But I want, I want to encourage you to take advantage of every minute, every night, every day. Don't, don't think, OK, I'm just going to give myself a break. Because, you know, this month is nothing like it, subhanAllah. And unfortunately, I'm personally, I know, I know of three people who were with us last month of Ramadan, and they're not here this year. And I know another two people who got di diagnosed with cancer who were not diagnosed last year. And then, you know, uh, not necessarily that they are very sick, but subhanAllah, having that worry in your mind, and I'm sure that takes you away from concentrating in your ibadah, working out your, subhanAllah. I've been, I'm, I'm 100 years old, but <laughs> I've been telling myself, I've, I've been, alhamdulillah, religious ever since I was, like, in my teenage years. And I've been telling myself, next year, it's going to be a better year. Next year, I'm not going to have exams. Next year, I'm going to have a better situation. I'm going to do better in next year, subhanAllah. I've been telling myself every year that. You know, I got married, and oh, I'm newly married, I'm just going to, you know. And then I had kids, oh, this year I have a baby, this year I'm pregnant. Oh, now I'm, you know, I'm having exams. And I've been given, you know, subhanAllah, you know, next year never comes. If you do not give yourself determination and start working from now and tell yourself, I need to do my best this year because I don't know. Maybe my situation will be worse. Maybe I'm not going to be even here next year. SubhanAllah. So inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all and guide us all to do our best in this Ramadan. And inshallah, I'll, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have questions or, you know. If you guys have any questions. Any presentation? I have a question. You know, subhanAllah, mm -hmm. sometimes we have a situation where we're, we wish we were good all year. <laughs> and we may not be doing what we're supposed to do all year long. One of the, is this accurate, like the extras could be that I'm perfecting what I'm supposed to be doing throughout the entire year and just recommitting myself to those actions and those intentions and the requirements that I'm supposed to do, even if it's, you know, being nice to my parents or making my prayers on time or, you know, doesn't, does it have to be the extras or is that... It can be, subhanAllah, it can be the extras because we know that from a hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, you know, the day of judgment when you come and, you know, you miss some prayers, some extras can fill in, you know, you miss some fasting, some extras can fill in. But subhanAllah, you know, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepts tawbah at any time. If we, if I realize that, I'm in, you know, I am engaged into any sin we all are, you know, in some way or another, subhanAllah, and I make tawbah, subhanAllah, a sincere tawbah. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everybody know what Tawbah means. Tawbah is to report to Allah. Oh Allah, I am sorry for what I did and I want to start a new page. Allah completely like, you know, turn it around and you have a new page. It's not like people. Unfortunately, you make a mistake with people and just like it takes forever for them to, to kind of accept you back again. And if they do, that's a great thing, subhanAllah. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's totally different. You just have to tell, oh Allah, I want to repent to you. Oh Allah, I want to repent to you, and I want to come back to you. I want to stop 
I, I, I'm not happy with what I did with my mom. I'm not happy with how I've been doing with my prayers. I want to I wanna come back. I want to try again. And Allah will tell you, yes, come. SubhanAllah. You know, Allah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I, I love this hadith. You know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us, you know, that there was a great uh, thing, SubhanAllah, in Ghazwa Tahunayn, when the Sahaba were like, you know, they were victorious and they were like, they won the war and everything. And this woman from the Kuffar, she comes around and she's pushing these men around and she's looking for her baby. She had lost her baby in, in the battle field, SubhanAllah. And she finds her baby, she sits down and nurses her baby. And she doesn't care about these, the Muslims are the enemies. Imagine all these soldiers with the weapons and everything, SubhanAllah. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he looks at her and he tells the Sahaba, do you see this woman hurting her baby? Do you see this woman throwing her baby in the fire? And they said, no way, she's throwing herself in the fire to, to, to protect her baby. And he said, inna Allah la arham bikum min hadihi wa Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is more merciful to you than this woman with her baby, SubhanAllah. And Allah, is, and another, another hadith, he said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is very happy with with your tawbah, with your coming back. SubhanAllah, you've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, and I'm coming back, oh Allah. Allah is happier than a person who's been lost in the desert, losing any means of life, and then he finds the means of life all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Imagine how happy that person would be. Mm -hmm. Allah is more happy with when, when one person comes back to him, say, oh, oh Allah, I want to be back. I want to come back. I want to stop what I'm doing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy. SubhanAllah. Every time, you know, um, and I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, Inna Allah la yabsutu yadahu billayl yatuba wasi in nahar. Wa yabsutu yadahu bin nahar yatuba wasi in layl. Every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends his hand. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extending his hand, subhanAllah, to those. Yeah, he's not extending his hand to those who've been perfect. <laughs> you know, he is, of course, giving them so much. But he's extending his hand for those who made a sin through the daytime, so they can say, oh, Allah, I want to come back. I want to be better through the nighttime. When they sit in the nighttime, oh, I can't believe I did this. They want to come back. Allah extended his hand to them. And in the daytime, he extended it back again for those who made the sin in the night. And now they're, they're in regret. They want to come back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready for us to, to make tawbah, to come back at any moment. At any moment. You cannot imagine. You can make tawbah at any moment of your life. Dua is a better, a beautiful thing. I was planning to talk about it, subhanAllah, at the time. Dua is a beautiful thing, which is making prayer, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala things. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm a mom, and I love my kids dearly, subhanAllah. And Allah knows how I would do anything for my kids. But when they ask me so much, it's like, go. You know, I need, I need Beast. I need, you know, just like what Maryam did with her kids, just lock them out. That's it. You know, <laughs> right? SubhanAllah doesn't have that. You know, Allah doesn't have a time where He lock us out, stop requesting, stop asking. Actually, He gets mad at us if we don't ask Him. He gets mad at us. He's, he's, you know, like, you have to ask Allah, otherwise He's going to be mad at you. The Sahaba used to ask him even the, the tiniest mm. thing. You know, one of them would break his shoe. Mm. It's like, okay, I'm just going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me find another shoe. Mm. But uh, shoelace, actually. Mm. Right? So that's what the hadith said. Mm. Imagine, subhanAllah. Mm. They would turn to Allah on everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanna hear you. Wanna, wanna like, listen to you calling him. And love hearing your voice. Mm. SubhanAllah. And sometimes to the believers, he would tell the angels, wait, wait. They'll give him their needs. I love hearing their voice. I love hearing them calling me. Imagine, imagine who are we dealing with? SubhanAllah, we are approaching the month of Ramadan and in, inshallah we are up to this, SubhanAllah, like where we are close to Allah in our hearts, SubhanAllah, in, in our actions and everything, SubhanAllah, because he's been waiting for us. He's been waiting for us all the time, extending his hands. Come back. And each one of us is significant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, me, maybe, you know, I'll walk in a room, people are not gonna recognize me or no, this is Yasmin or this is you know, it's not it's not important. Allah knows who I am. Allah answers me when I call him. Allah talk back to me when I talk to him, subhanAllah in my salah. That's enough. Allah give me his words, his the Quran. The Quran, it's not for the scholars, it's not for the Sheikh so and so to tell us what's the meaning, it's not 
It's the words of Allah, a message to me, and a message to you, and a message to you, and a message to every one of the human beings. Because subhanAllah, it's not just for the Muslims, because there's ayat that calls all human beings. SubhanAllah, Allah is talking to all human beings, subhanAllah, in the Quran. So inshallah that we, you know, Allah helps us to turn to him through this Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And the, the moment is to start from now by repenting back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking him for the help to uh, take advantage of every moment in Ramadan, inshallah. And that's, you know, include me and, and all of you, inshallah. Um, I sent a website, I mean, I sent out a YouTube thing yesterday, and it, it really emphasized what uh, Sister Yasmin was mentioning just now, was that the Qur'an is for all mankind, and whether you're Muslim or not, it should affect you. And it, it's, I sent it out last night where a scholar, one of the, I don't even know if he was a scholar, but I believe he was a scholar, yeah, exactly. met with, um, I, I haven't listened to him because he's Arabic. <laughs> It's all in Arabic, so I have to, you know. Anyway, he he's asking, a, I guess, an ambassador from Japan, um, if I were to read you a group of words, would I'm going to read you two sets of groups of words, and would you, can you tell me what you know of it? And so he read uh, words from the Quran, which were when um, Prophet Muhammad was talking to, I mean, when Allah was talking to. Um, Ibrahim, I believe the the surah was dealing with Prophet Ibrahim, um, and then he read in the same rhythm. He read, "I'm welcoming you here, and by the time we finish, you will be my friend." And I don't know what else. Anyway, so he asked him, "What did you feel with the first set of words?" And he said, "I felt it was very heavy, very strong words. Very, it entered my heart." And he said, "The second set of words was just poet." Poetic. It was just words. I felt just common courtesy and niceness and stuff like that. SubhanAllah, that's the difference between the Quranic recitation or, or uh, quoting from the Quran and using Allah's words to describe Him and to describe His religion than to just speak nicely from our own selves. Because all of the things that the scholar was saying were nice words and they were, they were welcoming him as a guest, an honored guest, all of these things. But when he read the Qur'an, it entered his heart. He says the first sentence, these are the words of Allah. Yes. The second sentence, these are the words of me. Yes. And the man identified immediately the difference between the words of Allah without even understanding the language. Or, and the rhythm was exactly the same. Exactly the same, but also the man needed an interpreter. So it wasn't like he understood the Arabic language. He was so being Allah. spoken to with a translator. And so the translator was reading, was telling him, he didn't tell him what the words were to begin with. He just was translating, I'm going to read to you these sets of sentences Choose and which one you tell like me this. which one uh, enters your heart, which one affects you. And that's how it was. I mean, it was very, um, it's big impact on a very person when they hear <laughs> the words of Allah than when they hear just how nice somebody can possibly be. You know, subhanAllah. So what we should be using our Qur'an, we should be allowing it to enter our hearts. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't enter your heart, then you have a lot of work to do. You have things that, if this person who is not even from Islam, who has zero understanding of God, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, Japan, usually they're, they're atheists atheist or Buddhists or whatever, you know, and, and you're not going to find the understanding of God with them. Mm -hmm. But if it enters his heart with that, understanding of who God is, how about, how should it enter ours, you know, subhanAllah. Also, make every, like, the comments um, Sister Yasmin was explaining, make each day a new commitment. Make it more important to you than yesterday. Make each action you do mean something, not only to yourself, but to making you a better person than yesterday. You know, I, I say this over and over and over, that we have to perfect ourselves. We have to work and reach for perfection. We cannot just sit waiting for perfection to hit us. 
it's not going to be that way. Allah does not change our situation unless we make the effort to change it ourselves. If we are messing up, ask Allah to help you stop. Ask Allah to help you improve. Ask Allah to bring you closer to Him. Ask Allah to give you, to make you love your prayer, for example. It's something you're required to do, but maybe you're not doing a great job at it. Maybe you're not um, practicing it in, a, in the best way possible. Maybe you're, maybe you're delaying it. Maybe you're making your, your prayer after the show's over or after this game. Give her a big hug, okay? I did. I Okay. Make make even the actions you do that are normal actions better than you would any other time. And because it takes how many days to to form a habit? Forty, right? Twenty-one. I was under the understanding it was forty, but you have thirty days to perfect those habits, to change a bad habit into a good habit. Make it beautiful to you. Make what you do mean something to you so that when you're doing it, it has nothing to do with what other people think about you. I've seen people who reach the stage of where they're coming back to their childhood years, you know, how Allah tells us you will enter this world as a baby and you will leave this world as a baby. And those people who have attained satisfaction in their nests, in their, their spirit, well, in their spirit, are satisfied in their elderly age. Those who have attained satisfaction in their nest are never satisfied. Mm -hmm. When you just want what you desire, you want it now, and it, you want it yesterday, you don't want it right now, you want it yesterday, this is the person who has not benefited from <coughs> the knowledge that Allah has shared with us. Yes? I think something that Sister Sarah earlier is, is key in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. Mm -hmm. In the Arabic, I think it says "Ayakum uh, Tatakum," and it's basically talking about the, uh, learning that self-restraint that you have to have. Mm -hmm. And and fasting is so many things we have to have self-restraint with, which I think is really the hikmah, the wisdom of it all. Is you you got to have self-restraint against the hunger pains. Mm -hmm. You got to have self-restraint against thirst. You got to have self-restraint against anger. You gotta have self restraint against impulsiveness, mm -hmm. and it's a reminder, inshallah, that if we really learn from it, that we should go through life that way and not just this month that way. And I think that is, inshallah, like you said, going back to it, perfecting it, working on it daily, is something that when Ramadan, inshallah, comes back around, that's the habit we, inshallah, we already so, have. Yeah. And next year won't be as difficult. Exactly. If every year is as difficult as last year, you're not doing it right. You're just not. We have to do better every year, or we're not doing it right. You know, we're we're standing still. And what do I say when we're standing still? What happens when we're standing still? We're already falling back because when we're not doing anything, we're already behind what we could have been doing. So we're always falling backwards when we stand still. So make your new commitments. Make Allah is oft forgiving. Be most merciful. If we need something from Him, He will give it to us. If we're okay, go. If we need something from Him, He will give it to us. If we ask with a sincere heart, He will give it to us. He answers the du'a of the fasting. Is this not an accurate yes. statement? Those of you who are fasting, if the first day is like you messed up all over the place, you're still fasting, okay? You're still trying, you know, you're still making that effort. Don't give up just because you feel like you just messed it up all over the place, you know? Don't just stop. Continue and make tomorrow better and the next day better and the next day better. And learn how to say, that person is not going to bother me today. That person will not deter me today. This television show happens every day. I'm not worried about it. If I missed it, I don't care. Allah, when, when you think about what Sister Yasmin was mentioning, how Allah is waiting for you, the doors of Jannah open, waiting, calling you, come on, come to me. 
what does that television show got to do with it? What does that game have to do with it? What does that person who's making you really angry have to do with going to Jannah? Who cares? If you have the opportunity to reach eternal life in Jannah, what are you worried about this stuff here, the dunya, which is the lowest of lows of life? You know, who cares? So please, let's all keep in mind and re-watch this class today because I guarantee you, you will benefit every time you watch it. Because it is not Yasmin who made this up. This is Qilam <coughs> Allah. This is Qilam Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a knowledge that was given 1400 years ago that didn't, wasn't something that had to be explained to us, to them, but it has to be explained to us. This is a sad time where we have to go back and really investigate information because we, have, we don't know it. SubhanAllah. At the time of the Prophet, they knew it, and so it didn't have to be as emphasized. We need it, and we need to emphasize it on ourselves more and more often, and that's why I love having the production. <laughs> These things where you can go back and watch it and learn more. Each time you watch it, you'll learn more. Thank you so much. You're so very welcome. Anytime you'd like to pin and offer us information, I would love it. You know, she also mentioned, I just want to really read this really quick. Um, she also mentioned the um, attaining satisfaction, right? When we there was a man that came to the Prophet وسلم, and asked him for a rich heart. Just make me rich at heart, which means satis give me satisfaction. Don't, don't leave me still desiring something. And subhanAllah, this man was the most humble, the most happy, the most um, satisfied person to the day he died, to the extent that even the people forgot his name because he didn't even need the recognition of knowing who he was. You know, subhanAllah. So we should be seeking that <coughs> stage of life where we're not, it doesn't mean you sit in squalor and, and live like that because you think you need to do that to be able to be humble. It means don't try to reach up for you know, fame and fortune and all of these things. Allah gives you great things, be thankful. Allah gives you a bad thing, be thankful. Don't, don't just wish for the better, but be thankful that that's all he gave you, because there could be much worse. I've said that a million times too. And then there are this lessons is, in, the, in the bad too. There are lessons in the bad and there are Amen. lessons in the good, because yeah. when you're tested with good things, it's still a test. When you're tested with bad things, it's a test. We always know the bad thing's a test, but do we know and can we recognize when the good thing is a test? You got all this money, all of a sudden it rained outside, and you have 50 and 100 dollar bills and all of this. What do you do with that? You're going to just go through it like a, you know, you ate noodles, you know? Or are you going to do something with it, you know? What, you, you were given a whole bunch of things all at one time. What are you going to do with it? Do you say alhamdulillah and share it? Do you say alhamdulillah and give back to Allah what he gave to you? Because when we give in charity, is that not giving back to Allah? Didn't go to him. Didn't go to Allah. He doesn't need our money. He doesn't need what he gave to us. But it went to people who needed it, and that was giving back to Allah. Anyway, Jazakumullah khair. We do have the last chapter of the book now, um, and it is talking about, I think we didn't read the 45th chapter. We didn't go through the 45th chapter either, um, where it's talking about the... Um, last speech of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, and then we have the story of his passing. And I love the fact that this book is this thick, and it leaves 45 and 46 to explain the last few days of the Prophet's life. Because the message was what's important, not just the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It wasn't just the man who died. It was the message that lives for and will be preserved till the day of judgment. You know, subhanAllah. And, and it's important to understand the history so that we can learn from it, but it's also important to understand the history so that we can understand our religion as well, not just the people who go to 
the masjid, but be people who live our religion. Because our religion is not a religion and it's not a way of life, it's both. We, it should be inside of us and it should be what we think and it should be what we do. It shouldn't be just something we do once a week. You know, Friday Muslims is what a lot of people call it. Just like Sunday Christians, you know. Um, so, who, did everybody read chapter 45 and 46? No, I read our Okay, we, I thought we were going to end. Well, I do want to talk about Aisha's age when she was married, but I would like uh, Sheikh Ali to explain it better. Um, <laughs> because I don't know the age, I don't have the exact numbers, and you, you have the exact numbers of how old she was when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed, <coughs> and how old, um, how long they were married. So that's, a question that's how we kind of keep up with that. Yes. And the reason why I'm asking this question this way is because I think we're looking at this situation with Lady Aisha, you know. I think in 2014 traditions, mm -hmm. and so, you know, when you look at the, the, the life and the traditions in that day, mm -hmm. <clears throat> one, that was not uncommon. Mm -hmm. Two, <clears throat> if you look at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life, and the different women he married, mm -hmm. some who were much older, mm -hmm. <clears throat> some who were not attractive at all, some who were, a lot of his, and the scholars can correct me, I'm not a scholar, mm -hmm. but a lot of his marriages were bringing a lot of these factions, these tribes, these people fighting, all of it, back together. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you hate me, but I marry your daughter, but it's like, and your daughter's saying, I'm not gonna leave this man, then now you you look at me or you may treat me, even if you don't like me, you're gonna treat me a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, I think that when we look at the story of her age and this and that, we need to bring all of that mm -hmm. in Definitely. focus. Yeah. Definitely, and, and I think that that's important also to understand is the time and age that we were dealing with, but also who cares? Yeah, are three arguments. <laughs> It doesn't matter how old she was exactly. when she got married. It doesn't change the fact that I believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the messenger of God. It doesn't change the fact that I believe that la ilaha illallah, Allah is one. <clears throat> and it doesn't change the fact that I pray and I wear hijab and I, mm -hmm. I do my required actions. What I, the whole purpose, and I think that the author was trying to make a point is because it's something that Muslims That's are attacked from. Oh, without a doubt. Um, and it's also it just sets your mind at ease a little bit. Now, the author states a few things in here that are not um, the mainstream concept of her age. And I do, like I said, this book has some things in here that you really have to really think twice about. A few of the, the stories are not as strong in base, like based on hadith or, or mm -hmm. history or whatever. But this. There's a miscalculation in this, um, but not so bad that it's something that would just completely be like, what, you know, how? But Sheikh Harib, if you don't mind to explain the three different um, viewpoints on this. There's three theories that are running around the Muslim community, and they're all coming from scholars. So we're not coming from outside of Islam, we're coming from inside of Islam. Obviously, outside of Islam, they're going to um, attack. Create. You went from Islam. 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 Basically, no, he wants to see you. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to go very quickly through There are three, three basic arguments. Some sets, some scholars say she was definitely six years old, other scholars say nine years engagement. old, <coughs> and engagement, and others say 12. There, there are three different arguments. They really don't make any difference on what age you really want to look at it. Um, many people in many cultures, even till this day, are promised in marriage before they're even born. So the fetus is already being engaged to someone <coughs> before the fetus is even developed. Uh, it's quite common in, in India, it's a common in Africa, it's common in many, many cultures. Till this day, your family, if you have a daughter, is going to marry my son. They're not even conceived yet. Um, we find it even in some of the Arab cultures, like you'll find it certain in like Yemen cultures, you, I'm only going to marry a Yemen kid. Not going to happen in young American kid. These things are common practices. So, for a family to promise their daughter to another tribe's person is quite common. Doesn't mean that there was some physical relationship taking place at that time. As we know, even from 
from Christianity, from you can go to any Christian encyclopedia. You go online, you can read the Catholic Encyclopedia, which is probably the most accurate records of, of marriages and ages of consent and things like that. Even if you go to the Jewish, uh, one of the Jewish sites, you'll find this information. Um, for example, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is recorded from the Christian scriptures. And that's not what we believe in Islam, but if you look at the Christian scriptures, they believe that she was anywhere between the age of 9 and 12 years old when she was promised in marriage to Joseph, who was 80 years old. Not 18, but 80. This was not frowned upon by the Catholic Church. It was not frowned upon by, by Judaism. It was not frowned upon by, by Islam. This only became an issue in theological